Welcome back to part three in our video series on the KTD 2061 RGB LED driver chip. My name is Carl Volk and I'm an applications engineer at Kinetic Technologies in San Jose, California. Additionally, I write demo software for LED driver chips. This video series has 11 parts. Previously in part two, we listened to my favorite local band while showing a demo video of the KTD 2061. Now in part three, we'll discuss the physical size and PCB layout advantages. This drawing is accurately drawn to scale. It shows the KTD 2061 on the right versus its two closest competitors. All three of these parts are intended to drive 36 LED channels, specifically 12 RGB modules. All these parts are in QFN packages, however, the KTD 2061 is about three times smaller, and due to its multiplexed output pins, it uses three times fewer PC board traces to the LEDs, which saves a whole bunch of routing space. Even in systems where size is not a constraint, the KTD 2061's much smaller size translates directly into solution cost savings. Previously in part two, we showed you this picture of our demo board. It's a simple two-layer PCB. Here is a close-up macro photo from the same board. You can see the KTD 2061 chip in 20-pin 3x3mm Ultra QFN package. In the lower left corner, you can see the only external component, which is the input bypass capacitor. It's a 6.3 volt 10 microfarad X5R ceramic cap in 0603 size, which is 1608 in metric units. Just to the right of CN are the I2C clock and data lines. Then, each of the remaining three sides of the package has a four-wire multiplexed output bus, bus A, bus B, and bus C. Each four-wire bus services four RGB modules, which equals 12 LED channels. Here is the drawing of recommended PC board layout from our data sheet. To clearly show the details, the middle section is drawn to scale, but is highly enlarged compared to the LED light ring. On the right, you can see the recommended PC board layout instructions from the datasheet. You can pause the video later and read this if you like. Note that for improved thermal performance, the KTD 2061 UQFN package has an exposed paddle. It is important to put a landing pattern for this directly under the IC and then connect it to the ground plane with multiple vias. Then the three ground pins should be connected directly to the exposed paddle directly under the IC. It is also a good practice to add an additional via that is not under the IC from each ground pin to the ground plane. I need to mention one last item. Please note that if the application is using a cable and connector to provide input power to the KTD 2061, it is a best practice to add additional input bypass capacitance near the connector where VIN comes into the board. I like to use a Panasonic POSCAP organic capacitor in the 47 microfarad to 150 microfarad range. But if these are too tall for the application, you can use two or three 22 microfarad ceramic capacitors in parallel. This reduces the input ripple caused by the inductance of the cable and the connectors. Thus far, I've had a few customers tell me that this part has reduced their PCB to only two layers, whereas their previous solution used four layers. That's pretty much it for PC board layout. If you want to pause and read, now is a good time. Thanks for watching. Please like and please subscribe, and be sure to click on other videos in the series for more on the KTD 2061.